Good morning. Welcome to Emmett Grove Baptist Sunday School Hour. And uh, we are uh, uh, very uh, blessed to be here this morning to, to give you God's Word. Uh, uh, this is a, uh, um, uh, a week to remember. Uh, this is the week that uh, uh, the Hurricane uh, um, Helene uh, visited, us, visited us. And uh, as I was thinking, telling my wife uh, uh, after uh, sitting through that uh, um, uh, storm that uh, uh, Friday morning, very early, uh, that God's in control. I mean, here, here we're, we're in a storm, and, and we think we got we have control, and we do get up and do and go as we as we come and please. But God's uh, uh, um, uh, His providence over all things rules, no matter what, uh, and and. Uh, so we, we're, we're, very, we're humbled right now with no power and many people struggling, and, uh, but yet the Word of God moves on and, and remains through these things. And so that being said, we're just blessed to be here to be able to give you a Sunday School lesson this morning. We don't even know if we'll be able to put this online uh, in the time that it's been recorded or not, but, but it's God's will that that storm came through, and we're very thankful uh, that, uh, that we survived and that uh, you've got to put a lot of things back together now, a lot of cleanup and uh, uh, some possibly some destruction to some of the crops and such things. But, but uh, uh, finding glory in the things that God does, I, that is the key, I believe, as I get older, as I begin to really truly understand God and then myself and my heart. So uh, uh, today we're going to look at one, the very last miracle in our study, in it, but it is the greatest of miracles in my opinion. Uh, I don't think this was uh, be much argument about this. It was the raising of Lazarus, and uh, so uh, this will be a multiple part uh, lesson, Lord willing, uh, two or three at least. Uh, today we're going to look and uh, be looking in John eleven, chapter eleven, and really just looking at the first six verses. Uh, uh, well, so much there, but so much that can be applied to us. Our, our uh, a lot of things, uh, family, homes. Uh, uh, where we live, uh, uh, and then the, the heart of Jesus, uh, uh, family, uh, that he loves us, and some good, good things in this lesson. So let's go to the Lord in prayer and ask for his blessing as we, uh, as we examine his word, these first six verses in John chapter 11. Uh, Jesus raises Lazarus. God, we thank you this morning. We praise your name. Lord, we do pray for those in the path of the storm, those that uh, possibly won't have power for weeks maybe, and Lord, it's so humbling, God, when you take things away from us for a while and we really realize how blessed we are. We take so much for granted, God. We're such a sinful people that, that like we deserve these things. And, and you owe us something, but you owe us nothing. You sent Jesus to the cross for salvation, and that is enough. And, uh, and you're not going to do any more, uh, God. You're there, and certainly you listen to our prayers. And as the message of Martha and Mary went out, it ended in glory. And, uh, but God, what a lesson it is to to draw near to you in bad times and hard times and difficult times, distressing times, and leaving it up to you to, to give us that perfect answer, God, even if we don't understand it. So, Lord, bless us now. Bless me as the as I as I present this lesson as you've given it to us this week. Uh, and, Lord, all of these things going on around us, all the things on the side, God, of, of turmoil and, and cleanup and disaster, storm disaster and such things as that, God, that that be... Uh, put on the lower shelf, Lord, that your word be on the top, God, and that, uh, Lord, we uh, we just uh, focus on you. Thank you for raising Lazarus. Thank you for this study. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, so the raising of Lazarus, we mentioned it was most likely, it certainly is my opinion, the greatest of all miracles. Um, this is the most detailed and most dramatic uh of all of Jesus's uh, miracles in length of verses and the heart of Jesus. There's so much here that he reveals to us. It's filled with um, divine teaching as always. And we keep saying this week after week that the miracles seem to almost take second place to the the teachings of Jesus and the, and the, and the revealing of hearts. So uh, many things we've learned, unforgiveness and, and, and how can someone see a miracle and, and still... Uh, deny you, deny Jesus, not us, but, but God. Uh, my thought in this is, this is unique that this miracle, this grand, grand miracle of the raising of Lazarus um, is only recorded in John. And, my, and the first thing I, I never, I think I've ever thought about this, but I said, why is this just not in all four Gospels? 
But well, God is just, he decided. He decides what's in his Bible. But it's an it's interesting thought that it's one of John's seven sign miracles. Uh, seven or eight, I can't remember what that number is. It's one or the other. Uh, but, um, but John chose to put it in his gospel, uh, in, into Jesus' gospel here, uh, and it's wonderful. Jesus has raised a, a, a dead only daughter. Uh, he's raised now, uh, last week, uh, or uh, actually I think first, he's raised a dead son, an only son, and now he's going to raise um, a, a dead friend uh, uh, from the grave. One from, we mentioned this, one from, from her deathbed, from her bed, bedside. One, this, the only son was in his coffin being carried to the cemetery. Today we're going to look into Lazarus and, and then maybe in a week or two we will uh, go to the grave site. We will when he says, uh, Lazarus arise. Uh, one uh, from the tomb, four days in, in the tomb. Um, we, we mentioned that, that, that death, uh, uh, the times of death, length spans of death have no effect on God. Uh, everything is possible through him and whether you've just died or been going carried to the cemetery uh, or, or even been in the tomb, it, it, it did not hinder God's power to raise people from the dead. Uh, um, again, we will look at this in multiple parts. Um, one of the interesting thing is there's no other really other place in the gospel um, that uh, Jesus' character has been displayed so perfectly as being divine, being who he said he was. And John's gospel, basically summary, his brief of words is that Jesus was who he was. That's all John's, John's gospel um, uh, points to, is that he was, he was who he said he was. Um, and the second thing is, is how his perfect humanity is, is shown here. Uh, in his love, and that's what we're going to look at today, his love for Lazarus and Mary and Martha uh, and, uh, and family is so much there. One common commentator stated this way, this is a, uh, a summary verse was in is, is it John 1, 14, where uh, John wrote, uh, he opened up the word, uh, in the beginning was the word, oh, that famous John 1, 1. But John 1, 14 says very similar things, the word became flesh, Jesus came from heaven. Um, is the is the, um, uh, the 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 son uh, of the Father, the Holy Spirit, the Triune God, came to Earth. Um, uh, the Word became flesh, and He dwelt among us. He was with those disciples, and all these miracles was was Jesus dwelling with His with His own uh, on Earth, um, and we saw His glory. And the, and certainly, this miracle is 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 glory, glory, glory. So what a great verse to summarize the whole miracle here, John 1, 14, uh, in that. Uh, although this was not Jesus' is the last miracle in our study, it's not the last miracle that Jesus had done. He, uh, he had yet to heal at this particular time to heal the ten lepers. Remember that? The, the, that was the lesson of, 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 uh, of unforgiveness. Uh, nine did not return uh, to thank Jesus, but uh, then he healed blind uh, Bartimaeus and in his in the other blind man, the two blind men, there uh, uh, in chronological order. Then he raised Lazarus, and in the last three uh, was was um, the fig tree, uh, the healing of, of Malchus's ear, and then the last was his uh, the great catch of fish it, uh, in his resurrected body. It's interesting the different phases of Jesus. On Earth, leaving glorified in a resurrected body, did did a miracle. Um, uh, he did it uh, 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 in his flesh, and he did it resurrected uh, miracles. Um, uh, but what is maybe more significant than ever in the is uh, in the, the chronological order of the miracles, which seems to always fascinate me uh, in this study, was the close proximity in time of his own death. Uh, and his own resurrection, uh, which uh, what I think last week was that miracle of the resurrection. Uh, very similar. I, we don't know exactly the time frame, but very close in time. Uh, Jesus did go into Bethany. We'll talk about that. Heal Lazarus. He left for a short time. I think went back to Galilee and then returned. But it was uh, getting down to months possibly uh, before uh, the Passover, the last Passover. Um, so... Let's look at this reading of the scripture. Let's, let's just look at the first uh, six verses right here and read them. Um, the, the, the basic thing this morning, is we, if we had to, and I took this from a commentary, is the, is, and they call it a part one, is the case for the miracle. 
all of the things for the miracle, the case. Our life is a case before God. How are we living and what, what are we doing to please him uh, and to do his will? Doing his will is everything, folks. I'm telling you, you got to know his will. you got to do his will. Um, and uh, that's the part we're responsible for, folks. Uh, and, and God is not going to do for us things that we can do for ourselves, okay? Let's just put it that way. I want to sit around and think that God's just going to make me do this and make me do that. No, he's not. He's going to give you faith. And he's going to help you increase it. But you got to supply your part, you know. And that, tune in on Wednesday nights um, uh, and go back and look at the prayer meeting uh, for the last three weeks of prayer meeting in First Peter, uh, Second Peter it is, uh, uh, for the first chapter, to know that you're saved. What are, what are these things here? So here we are. Uh, we're, we're in Bethany, uh, and Jesus is there, and, and John begins this, this wonderful miracle uh, unique to his gospel. Here we go in verse 1. Now, a certain man, interesting there, certain, was sick. Lazarus of Bethany. Um, you know, names, uh, even like Mary Magdalene. Magdalene wasn't her last name. That was the place she was from. So that was that was commonplace uh, in, in the Bible and the scriptures to associate the place with the person's name. Here's, here it is. He was Lazarus of Bethany. And then John describes the village of Mary and her sister Martha. So much in these first few verses. Now listen to verse 2. It was the Mary who anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose, whose brother Lazarus was sick. John locks this down specific into who, who he was speaking of right here. Verse 3. So the sisters, that's interesting to underline, both of them sent word saying, now pay attention, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. A very simple, we're going to call that a prayer here in this, in this study. Verse 4, but when Jesus heard this, perplexing here, here we go, he said, boy, Jesus always keeps us on our toes. This sickness is not to end in death. Oh boy, what a, what a statement but for the glory of God so that the Son of God may be glorified by it. He said very similar words to the man born blind. Um, and the question, who sinned? Now, verse 5. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Oh, my goodness. Boy, we want our names in that verse. I'm telling you, you, you want that. So when he heard that, that he was sick, then he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. That's perplexing, isn't it? He stayed there, intentional, deliberate. Okay, so I know you say, I don't think I've ever really considered just when I read this, and me either, uh, that there's so much there, but we're gonna, we're gonna make much of it, okay? God's gonna make much of it here. Now let's talk about this village of Bethany and the town of, of this seemed to be Jesus' city of refuge. He used this many, many times, and we'll talk about some things here as we get to this. A certain man was sick. He was Lazarus of Bethany, and it's called a village, the village. Um, and it's mentioned again um, uh, of, of this village. Um, it's a, a small community. I tried to think about what would be called a village today. And I think of uh, uh, maybe like I, we're from the Neville. My, I know my last name is Neville, but the Neville's community. And actually that, that the man Jake Neville's actually was some of our kin way back. He's in our in our genealogy, and it's got a great genealogy book that a man wrote for us, for our family. Um, but it may be a little community, uh, and we see these little signs, uh, hope you like it, or what have you, uh, a community that had a, maybe like a store, you know, and just, just the people and some residents. I, I don't know, but I, I'm, I'm just trying to picture the size of it. The thing about that would be you knew everybody there, right? Um, you know, it's funny as, as time goes on and uh, get more complicated, people get fa move faster. And remember my, uh, my daddy's first cousin worked at the bank for many, many years and said, you used to go through Statesboro and, and you knew everybody there. You, everybody you passed, you knew. You could go ahead and just wave, you knew who they were. And he, he was recollecting even, this was even 20 something years ago, he said, now you don't know anybody. <laughs> it was just, it gets big, you know, and you don't, you don't, you don't, but in a village, it's small and you know people, okay? Bethany was located about two miles uh, east of Jerusalem, kind of east, uh, southeast, but more east than south. A, a very short walk. Um, and though this was a, a very small village, a small town, it was very famous in the scriptures. Very. Think about, you ever think about how many churches are named Bethany? 
uh, you know, it just came to mind. I, I've, I've just seen that a, a lot. Bethany, the word Bethany, um, and, and why is that? I mean, wh why? Why? Did you, why? Why does that? Uh, uh, well, wh what we know about Bethany, and, and I certainly think we can all agree, uh, it had a good reception. Uh, the town did, the village of Jesus. It received Jesus. There wasn't much rejection. Well, we think about Nazareth, where he said. Well, the scripture says he could do no miracle there. This that was his hometown, uh, and, and you know Jesus would had some things to say about them. It was a kind of a woe to them, you know, uh, for rejection. Um, but uh, to have a good reputation uh, of loving Jesus, uh, it was a village of good reputation and a good standing with God. Man, that's where you want to be, um, and um, and to. To, to have that, to, have, to, be, to be a part of a community. Um, it's also noteworthy of Bethany. This is very important here, and, and maybe just in knowledge, but much glory here also, that Bethany was located very, very close to the Mount of Olives. It, it could have been that uh, it was, a, a, I think it, they, uh, I've heard that it was a hillside community, sort of not maybe so much in a valley, but kind of, kind of on a side of one of those beautiful mountains in Israel, um, in that... Um, uh, it was uh, a part of that little mountain chain or hill, hill chain uh, uh, where the Mount of Olives was. Um, very, very, uh, we might ask uh, uh, that about that famous place and many of us that know the Word of God know how critical that is to the, uh, to, to the, the times ahead in this, or the time frame of this miracle and certainly the future. Um, but there's three kind of three things in which uh, as we think about Bethany, uh, and we think about the Mount of Olives. The Mount of Olives was the place of, of, of uh, prayer for Jesus. He many times went out. Matter of fact, he went out so much uh, to the Mount of Olives, uh, uh, very close to Bethany, as we mentioned, uh, in the vicinity, we might say. If it was only two miles from Jerusalem, the Mount of Olives must have been like in plain sight, possibly, uh, from it. Um, but uh, that even even uh, Judas Iscariot knew where to find Jesus. Uh, he that's where he was arrested uh, uh, there praying uh, and and, uh, and and shortly crucified and and condemned. Um, this also was the place of his ascension. It's where he went back to heaven. It was as John thirteen wrote. I love that verse of one that his hour had come and it was time for his departure. Uh, John knew where Jesus came from and he knew where he was going back to. He was going back to be with the Father, uh, separated for that very short time, those few 40 or so hours. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, that's where he ascended. Now, praise God for all of that, but the, but the one we're looking for is when he comes back. And, and so he's coming back and he's going to come back to that mountain uh, in such a way that that mountain will be split, it even says the scriptures. And um, in, in Revelation and some other places where he will come back to the mountain um, in prophecy, uh, his second return. Um, it's, it's just awesome here. If we think about the, the site, Jerusalem, Bethany, and the Mount of Olives, boy, they are, they, they, they are as, the, as, the, as, the, as the prophet wrote, it's the center of the earth. And we keep our eyes and prayers for Israel now and these wars and skirmishes, um, which are really minor. I mean, I know war is war uh, and evil is evil, but these little things are, are the birth pangs that are that are ahead, certainly, but it's falling right along in Scripture there. But it's a very important place in the world, um, and it's interesting. Such a little little country uh, with such a deep history with God that that to even those that don't know God, not, not even a uh, any uh, uh, revelation uh, through the Holy Spirit who who Israel is, they get the press's attention always. It's always in the news that place uh, in the Holy Land. Uh, so very, very interesting Bethany right here, two miles from, from Jerusalem. Uh, now, also we want to we want to mention as we move into our next teaching point, the, the, the village of Bethany with that great reputation for God, a good standing with God. In Bethany, was there as we read here, was Lazarus, was Mary and her sister Martha, three very, very close friends of Jesus. Uh, and Jesus would say this, uh, in Matthew 12, 48 through 50. I love that. Uh, he was teaching there. Uh, his mother and his sisters, uh, I think that might have been where we understand that Jesus had a sister. Uh, his brothers and sisters came and, and, and wanted to, <coughs> as I understand <coughs> studying that in the past, <coughs> they were coming to get him and take him home. They, they just, uh, 
I don't know if they just thought that, uh, don't know what they thought, but, but uh, as if they were coming to help Jesus. And so he looks around and he said, said, your mother and your brothers are here. And he looks around, he said, these are, he looked at those that were listening, those that were, that were taking in the things of God, that they were truly listening. He looked around, he said, and his disciples, I'm sure are there among him and said, the, behold, this, these are my brothers and sisters. Uh, and we go on to say something that his family are the ones that do the will of his father. We already mentioned that already in our prayer uh, or in our introduction, the will of the father. Uh, those are the true family of God. So let's talk about this family. This is the beloved uh, family home here uh, of, of Lazarus, of Bethany, of the village, and his, and his uh, sisters, uh, Mary and Martha. Uh, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus were, again, among Jesus' closest friends. He confided in them. The, um, and it was uh, in verse 5, we, make, we see this statement here that sort of puts an exclamation point to, to his love for them. Now Jesus loved Martha, her sister, and Lazarus. And John was the, you remember, he, was, he referred to himself as the one whom Jesus loved. So he understood this clearly. I'm not sure that witnessing this and being a part of this miracle that, did his, that God would change his heart in such a way that he would say, man, to be loved by God is, is, is everything. Uh, and this is that agape love. And, uh, 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 it's an unconditional love. It's a love that most of us don't know. Uh, um, um, the closest I could think of something would be a, a parent, a, a mother, especially a mother. I don't know. A mother is just love. Uh, the storm being as it is, and uh, my, my daughter uh, uh, and God giving her a very precious, I hear, he's crying in the next room right now. Uh, he's there here with us because their electricity is off, and we're blessed to have a generator and have some, some power even to do this. But she's with us. Um, and um, But the love of a mother, especially for that young child, and the things they do, uh, is close to agape love. Um, I like this. It's a fixed love. God's love, it doesn't, and here, here's a good definition. Why do you mean by fixed? Uh, uh, it never increases and it never decreases. You don't do anything to earn any more love. It's not about doing things, folks. Uh, it's about the heart. Uh, and it never decreases. I can't mess up enough to cause him not. It's a fixed love. Uh, and, it's, and it's unaffected by my flesh and things that I do. Uh, he loved this family. He loved Mary Martha. Very important. And like Peter's home, it's a good comparison here. Peter, a lot like that. Peter, one of the inner three, and you know, with Jesus, he healed her, his mother-in-law in that, that flurry of miracles on that day. It was probably no other time written in Scripture with so many things that happened there uh, in that time. But Peter's home was, was, was like, just like this. Um, Jesus, we know in Scripture, including this, was there three times, including today's lesson in Raising Up, was there three times he, he was there uh, uh, in Luke uh, 10, 38 through 42, contrasting the sisters. That's interesting. Remember, Martha was the one that was uh, busy, 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 going and doing, and nothing wrong with that, but she lost her focus on the Lord, where Mary would, it was almost called lazy, but she was taking in, soaking in the things of God, and, and Jesus commended her for that. Uh, work's important, things we need to do, but certainly the, we need that first before the work. Um, so he contrasted them there. Uh, that's in Luke 10. We mentioned that. Then over in John 12, and actually John 12, uh, which uh, comes after the, this miracle, and is a part of it, actually. We're going we're gonna to look at some scriptures uh, in John 12 as we close out this miracle um, uh, in the latter middle, middle section of that chapter um, uh, where they come and they have supper. Uh, uh, there Jesus visits us there, and, and Mary and Martha make a dinner. Uh, and there um, is uh, where, uh, well, we, I said dinner. Maybe they didn't do a dinner there, um, but uh, no, I don't think it mentions that. But, uh, um, but there's, that's where, that's where Mary anointed Jesus' uh, feet with that very expensive, uh, a year's salary worth of, uh, of, of, uh, of nard uh, to anoint Jesus for his burial, when having no idea what she was doing doing the will of God and certainly uh, preparing his body for that burial uh, that would be soon to come. It was the day before the triumphal entry. So you're, you're looking at a week, uh, eight days before the from before his crucifixion. So he visited this loved family. He loved to be there. Um, and uh, Bethany was very, very special. 
Um, uh, matter of fact, he would say of Mary, we'll mention this probably to come, uh, in Mark uh, 14, 9, they were they given her a hard time, and someone thinks uh, it was Judas that spoke up. So why did she waste all this perfume, this nard, expensive? We, we could have sold the, sold it and kept the money and blah, blah, blah. We kind of start to reveal uh, uh, Judas's heart there a little bit. Uh, that Jesus would say, leave her alone, and, and say something along this line that, that in Mark 14, 9, that where this gospel will be, will be preached, and he wasn't just talking about what, what he had done previously, but certainly his, his death, burial, resurrection uh, uh, through, throughout to the gospels, into the uh, Acts, the church age, and to the, end, to the ends of the earth, that wherever this gospel is preached, that, that because of what she did here, uh, Jesus, and I'm paraphrasing here in Mark uh, 14, 9, that she will always be remembered. This will be in memory, in her memory, not Jesus' memory, but her memory, for doing these things so very important and that happened in bethany happening right there in this beloved family home and that's here's some notes i want to bring to, to mind here that hit home here uh, and i tell you I've, I've had a home where god was not at the center i've had a home that uh, and i've been blessed my whole life i have not been in need um and i hadn't lord willing been very sick in my day i've had we've all had some but uh just you know haven't had a hard life i really haven't um, and and I and and it was through some wickedness that I did some rebellion and not living for the Lord, saved, but certainly as far back as I could backslide. And I think about that agape love. And I, I couldn't do anything to to, to take away from to, you know I couldn't destroy anything of God's love, especially if I'm saved and you're saved. But their home always seemed open to Jesus. And my home was not always opened up to Jesus like it is now and like it is tomorrow and the next day as long as I live. Uh, uh, it was open for his care. It was open uh, as Mary Martha uh, took care for his comfort and also for his rest. Uh, uh, we, we, we mentioned, uh, or maybe we didn't mention that even in the Passion Week, Jesus didn't spend the night in, um, in Jerusalem. He went in in the mornings and he returned. Um, uh, think about the fig tree. He, he went by it one morning and came back by it. And, uh, and, um, but he was going and coming each night. And, and at least once in, in the Passion Week, it mentioned that he went back to Bethany. I can't help but think that that's where he went. He went back to this beloved home where he was loved. Um, um, and so we, we come up with a statement here that says that when our homes, please understand this, our homes in the, in the heart, of those that live there, the man, the, the wife, and children. Uh, when our homes are opened and devoted to Jesus, like Martha, Mary, and Lazarus were, we are assured of his presence, okay? We are, are sure of his blessings. Um, so it's important to keep a clean house, folks. It's, it's important uh, that, um, as Joshua said, as for me, uh, in my house, we're going to follow the Lord. I mean, uh, and, and what it is here, and I'm certainly, this is a beloved family uh, home, which Jesus frequented. Much to learn here, much to glean from this. Uh, as we think about that Matthew 12 passage, these are my brothers and sisters, and this is where I dwell. Um, so let's look at this man, Lazarus, and let's look at sickness for a minute. We've mentioned this several times in verses 1 and verses 4. There was a certain man, he was named Lazarus of Bethany, um, uh, there were two Lazaruses that we know in the Bible that are mentioned, and it seems like Lazarus is a, is a common biblical name, but, but uh, as my commentary instructed two times, I didn't go back and research that. But if you remember the other Lazarus was in over in, in one of my favorite uh, 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 parables uh, in Luke 16 of heaven and hell of the rich man and Lazarus, which by the way, is unique in parables in that it's the only parable in which uh, uh, there, there are names given uh, to, to at least to one. The one that got saved, the one that went to heaven, uh, was, was Lazarus. Uh, uh, and and uh, that was his name. Um, and uh, so many believe, and I do too, that it was, this, this really happened. This was a real event. Uh, and Jesus was just giving this example and using it in a parable, comparing heaven to hell. Boy, Luke 16 is a wonderful uh, uh, teaching and it can be taught to kids in such a way. I, I remember we opened some eyes. I say we, the Holy Spirit, and me speaking uh, to some kids, and, and we taught this, and uh, and some of those kids got right. He ended up getting right later on. 
uh, uh, because the fear of, of dying and going to hell is not pleasant. Uh, and people that scoff at it, I, I saw something the other day said something about almost like bring on hell. And I was like, what? I have no idea what they uh, sticker on their truck in the big back in the back of the window. I'm appalled sometimes at the things people, um, you know, how outspoken they are against God, and they don't even know. They're so blind; they don't even know what they've got up there. Like they're like they're proud of, of going to hell or bring on hell. Uh, like uh, they're they're tougher. They, I'm telling you what, the devil's gonna humble some of them folks when they're in there in the, in his prison with him. Um, uh, but that being said, these let's look at these two Lazarus real quick. Uh, it's just interesting. I know it's kind of a side note, but it's very interesting here. Similarities. The Lazarus uh, in, uh, in the parable in Luke and the Lazarus here, the friend of Jesus, close friend. Both were righteous. We, we know that. Jesus stayed there, lived there. We don't really have any, you know, this Lazarus is kind of silent. I don't think that he ever said anything to one that Jesus raised. He didn't have to. <laughs> when Jesus raised him, that was enough. Um, uh, both were in poor health, okay? Terrible health. Um, both died, uh, the Lazarus, uh, it, is, it says that Lazarus in Luke 16, uh, the, the rich man had a funeral and, and basically Lazarus was just thrown out. I don't think he was even buried. Uh, so, But they both died. Now, the differences, listen to these. Um, uh, one lived in poverty because we know that man, uh, Lazarus in Luke 16, had uh, he was in poor health with the boils and the, he was just sick. And even the, so bad the dogs came and licked his wounds. I mean, just... The way Jesus would tell something, and um, and you know, and that, that was uh, matter of fact, we understood in, in that lesson that was actually um, um, medical care for him, for them to come and let. You ever know when you get a cut, a dog goes all the way like smelling your. I, I got a cut on my incision on my leg. I don't think he even said anything about it. Some surgery, and I was having to kick the dogs off. <laughs> I wanted to come up and stick their nose on my on my. Uh, I know that's kind of sounds kind of, but. Even that, God was providing care for this, this Lazarus. So he, he certainly was in poverty with no care. Uh, he was always in pain. But the Lazarus here lived in a, in a, in a godly home, and he, had, he lived in comfort. Um, he had his two sisters there to care for him, cook his meals and wash his clothes. And he kind of had it, had it, as we would say, and we say this in humility, had it made. Uh, some basic things taken care of. But the Lazarus, Lazarus in Luke 16 did not. Uh, now here's the here's the big difference and something I want you to think about. One remained dead, and one was raised from the dead. Amen. Big difference, and this always brings up this thought. And I always, a few years ago, studying this 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 uh, raising of Lazarus, and I got to thinking about this, and it probably wasn't my thought. But somebody gave this to me in a commentary or somewhere. One died once, and in most cases, for all of us, we're gonna live out our life. Physical, and we're going to die one physical death. But Lazarus and the son and the daughter, the three, uh, and another man, I, I believe there were three or four, or two or three, and, and uh, at least two can I think of in, a, in, in Acts, they had to die again. Can you imagine that? They had to die two physical deaths. Now, I, I always think about that. Think about that. We might talk more about this when we get there. But Lazarus was very, very sick. And he was completely restored, but he had to go right back through the. So, is 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 it really a kind of a blessing to want to be resurrected again? To have to go through that again? Um, best you can do is to be saved and be raptured, amen, and, and bypass all that. There will be some, absolutely, some will be blessed that way. Uh, good thought. Uh, one died once, one had to die twice. That is a physical death. Please understand that. Uh, in the world of sickness, uh, it's interesting here. That from the fall, since death, we talked about a couple of weeks ago. God does not; it's not God's desire that anybody has to die. It never was meant to be that way. It was meant to live with Him perfectly forever. But the story of God and man is the Bible, uh, and it's how to get back to that, get back to chapters one and two. You know, uh, and that's uh, all the work of God to do that. Why I do not know, but He. I'm glad He did. I'm glad Jesus made that way. But, but in sickness, uh, it, it started there in chapter 3, verse 6, when, 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 when Eve made that decision, uh, that fleshly decision. That in the first five verses here, six verses, sickness is mentioned five times. Uh, sickness is the case for the miracle. Uh, 
and uh, we might say some things in just a minute about that. Um, uh, we always seem to associate sickness uh, and what seems to be death. Uh, we think about these these six precious people that have been on our prayer list that are that are victims of ALS. One of them, my first cousin, and she is in her. Uh, I don't know, say last days. Certainly, we're all in our last days in a sense, but in a very bad way now, uh, and and waiting on the end to come. Uh, you know, just not even in her. Still in her thirties. She's the youngest of all of them. She only lives three, four miles from here. Her kids are going to church with us now. Praise God. Um, pray for Anna and Jason and her three boys. Um, but sickness, we always seem to want to associate with losing or loss. Now, who who is the instigator behind that? Certainly, the weekend in our flesh. But Satan forces his viewpoint that that's what that death is is the end and it's over. But in God's economy and God's great gospel and His promises that sickness and death are, uh, he still blesses. Uh, you know, think about my tragic death of my brother on his wedding day. He died on his wedding day that night. And I remember, just remember saying, not really shaking a fist at God, but why, 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 Lord? And I, boy, I tell you, a lot of my whys have been answered. I mean, it's taken 30 years or more to, for that to happen. 35 years, I think it is, 34 years. Um, and he gives this hint in verse 15, and we'll look at this next week, and he says this of his delay we're about to talk about that I am glad for your sakes that I was not there that's when Lazarus died so that you may believe for your belief so sickness we always know now first uh, Peter would write in his epistle in first Peter 1 5 and uh, excuse me 6 through 7 it's about trials about distress we've already we talked about that even this hurricane and, and there's some distressing situations that we're in right now with with no air conditioning, you know, we think about these, we don't know what we got kind of things, but to flip a switch on, we have a light. Now we don't. I mean, we, so how many times have we taken that for granted? I'll tell you, very, very uh, humbling times that we're in right this minute. Um, speaks of this, that, that the various trials that, that, that we are in and to come are so that our faith can be proved out. You don't know what kind of faith you have until it's tested. It's got to be tested. And it, it must be. Uh, and that this results in praise and glory and drawing closer to God and honoring Jesus. And that would, that's going to be certainly more spoken of as we, as, we end, as we go through this study right here. Um, so as we look at that, as we, as we look at um, the sickness of Lazarus, now let's look at the petitions for him, the, the intercessory in a sense is his sister send this message. I wrote down here, the sisters send a prayer message uh, in verses three through six. So his sisters, the sisters, both sent word to him saying, Lord, pay attention. That's the way to talk to God. Glorify him up front. Behold, he whom you love is six. Sick. Um, and I, you know, I got to thinking about it and uh, it's, it's kind of a rare occurrence for people to, uh, to sin for Jesus. Um, I can only think of two that I know of. Uh, we, we mentioned this. Some, sometimes they came to Jesus, but now this is sending for him. This is a little bit different. This is sending a messenger. The centurion did it, didn't he? It's almost like the perfect miracle. Everything went well there. Here's the man that's, uh, that said, I'm not worthy for you to come under my house. I said, that's over in Luke 7. Matter of fact, that's Luke 7, 7. Think about that one. Pretty cool. Uh, I'm not worthy to come under, under my roof, um, but, but humility. Um, but he but he sent. Remember, he sent the, the Jewish elders um, there for, at the synagogue. He he sent for help. Uh, and and the same thing here. Uh, they're sending a messen, a message, uh, a messenger um, uh, to to go and get Jesus. And, and so as we look at this, uh, and we think about our seven hundred seventy seven hours of prayer. And I'm telling you what, when you have seventy seven hundred hours of of, of prayer continuously for 31 or two days and our church does that and you can even call figure you can contact the church and you can even get involved just pick an hour and pray but you got to be committed for the whole hour this is not praying for five minutes to cover an hour it is a continual round the clock i mean yeah through the night yeah people actually will pray one two three in the morning for 777 hours do you realize the blessings. If Mary and Martha sent a message of one sentence to Jesus and he raises Lazarus, think of the power of God working through prayer. 
And we do not know that because we don't practice prayer like we should. And even those that do pray will admit, me, I'm one of them. We don't pray enough. It's never enough. But this message, a message to God is a prayer. That's what a prayer is, this message to God. So there's some lessons here. Let's look at them as we, as we try to uh, finish up here on this first part. First of all, it should be a first priority. First thing they did, he's sick. What did they do? They sinned for, for, for Jesus. Um, uh, um, James says this in 5.13. He said that if you got, if you're, if you got people sick, you need to pray for them. Um, you know, we, we do that at our church. We, we, we actually, in, at times, if requested, we'll, we'll, we'll have a service of laying on the hands, and we'll go down and we'll lay hands on a sick person and pray um, and um, put it in God's hands. But prayer uh, instigates a lot of God's blessings. And it's, it's the start up many times. Uh, but go and pray. Make it a first priority, not a second or third or fourth or whatever. It's like, well, there's nothing else to do. You ever heard this one? Uh, there's nothing else I can do, so I guess I'll pray. No, you should have prayed first, and you probably wouldn't even have to say that make that statement. Um, uh, and it's interesting how God changes your heart. You know, a lot of times you think of prayer as getting uh, getting a hold of God, and it is in a sense. But it's it's more of it is God getting a hold of us. Uh, it really changes the perspective, the view of. Of, of you and God when you begin to pray. I had an irate driver the other day that just did something so silly, not really to me, but I just witnessed this right beside me. And it made me so mad, uh, impatient. Just he passed and went around a car in the in the passing lane and, and uh, just made a, as my daddy would say, a fool of himself. And uh, and I was so mad. And by the end of the day, I began praying. That guy, I've been praying for that guy. It was, like, it was a car load of not very nice looking people. I mean, they look, they didn't look very uh, edifying. Been praying for that car. Isn't that crazy? It's changed my heart, uh, uh, praying for them. I, I never know. I don't know if I've ever done that before, but God's will is to just pray for that car. They might get saved, you know, not see them in heaven. Say, yeah, I was the one that, that you saw. <laughs> you don't even never know. First priority. We need to ask earnestly, um, uh, um, Think about this. They had to hire a messenger. They sent word. Uh, could have been somebody in the family. Might not have done it. And, and most Bible scholars think this is about a day's, Jesus was about a day's walk away. So this guy had to, or a person had to leave, travel all day long, walk all day long, uh, and get the word to Jesus. Uh, it probably cost them. Uh, I mean, how, how, how important are your prayers? Well, what, what, what does, when David said, I won't give anything to the Lord, King David, unless it costs me something, you know? And so here it is. Uh, we got to ask in reverence. We got to ask in respect. Pay attention to that message, Lord. They were given the message. This wasn't them speaking. They gave the message to be taken. And so it was. Uh, if it was written down or what have you, uh, or given verbally or what have you, Lord was first. And that may make that always the priority. Always the praise before the petition. I said that the other day uh, on a lesson. Uh, so. So many good lessons here. Uh, now I like this one. We need to ask for God's will. Notice they did not. Uh, they did not ask for any particular action from from uh, Jesus. Uh, remember um, the uh, the man with the, with the Jairus. Lord, you got to come lay hands. You got you got two things. You got to come to my house, and you got. He was telling Jesus how to do things. Now that's, I know Jesus knew his heart and knew because he went with him, didn't he? I mean, he did. Yeah, he went right with him. He, um, but you don't, we don't have to necessarily tell you. And that's good. It's good to pray specifically. Please understand that. I, I am a specific. I, if I ask questions about praying, uh, and you know, now the thing is, many people say it's gossip. I, I try to make people understand. I am not new in this for being nosy, but I want to know how to pray. And I and I say this a lot, and it confuses people. Let me know how to pray. And they might think, well, you don't know how to pray. No, I mean how what to ask for. You know. Um, they don't tell Jesus what to do. They just say he's sick. They, they leave it up to God to do it. Um, they didn't recommend anything. Um, I, I'll tell you what, uh, uh, Friday morning, I was trying to tell God what to do with his storm. We were moving west, and we were, we were um, lightheartedly, though we were very serious on Wednesday night. We knew the storm was coming. It was already developing. And, and uh, you know, if, if, I, if I pray that, it's very selfish prayer. Somebody else is going to get whacked, you know. Somebody else is going to get hurt uh, by by damage and such. And, and as it was, God moved it closer. <laughs> he 
did. It was going to go further west and maybe move it closer to us. So if I'm praying for something, Lord, help me, especially in a storm situation, uh, to, to do, you know, and, and I, I just felt convicted by that and expressed that in the prayer room that night. Um, ask for God's will. Lord, your will, not my will. Now, the, the last thing is we need to ask in humility and, and in unworthiness. Um, the centurion did that. And we, we mentioned that perfect, what I'm going to call a perfect miracle. God is perfect, his miracle. But the centurion, this heart that he had, I'm not worthy. Because uh, here's how they say it. Lord, behold, listen to us, God, please. Pleading with him, not, not forcing. He whom you love is sick. You love this man, and he's sick. Uh, that's, that's unworthiness. Let's say this about unworthiness, sincere unworthiness. Uh, only the Holy Spirit can convict these things because the flesh wants to rise up. Pride takes over, and, and, and I am worthy. We've already, we've already made comment to that. You will not fake this with God. You won't fake anything with God, but you're not going to fake um, uh, your humility before God and your unworthiness. So the Holy Spirit just certainly reveals to me that I am not worthy for, to even, you know, as John said, to bend, bend down and tie his sandal thong. Uh, Pastor Tim keeps re reflecting on, um, I think this is on his dad's tombstone, uh, John, 3, uh, John 3.30, I think it is. Uh, uh, I must decrease, but he's got to increase, you know. Uh, he's the one, and I'm not. Uh, so great just you say well, that was a simple message to glean all of that. Yep, that's the way God's word is. Uh, one verse is enough uh, uh, to, to 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 preach a sermon or teach a Sunday school lesson. Uh, the the sisters' prayer message to Jesus. Now let's look it up. We'll close with this, and we'll we'll kind of pick back up next week. The twofold purpose uh, in, in the miracle of, of Jesus doing these things. Um, uh, and maybe three. First of all, there's a, there's a sense of a, there's a prophecy. There's something we can talk about there. Uh, but glory, it's always glory uh, in, 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 in the purpose of a miracle, and certainly it's going to be here. Um, uh, and the second is that delay that he deliberately, the, the, the perplexing thing. Why didn't he just throw down everything, Jesus, and just take off? Uh, he, he's God, has the power of God. And time, see, he's so, he's outside of time. This is a, concept that I, it blows me away. He's, he, he's, he's Elohim. He's the eternal God. He's not, yes, he is on earth. Yes, he is. He's even aging. I mean, he's born as a baby. Now he's a 30-year-old man. Uh, he's going through, that's why we can't ever say, oh, Jesus, you don't know what I'm going through. He, he, he was aging just like everything else. Now, he was a very perfect person. I like to think of the cross that, that he had no no blemishes on him. He was a perfect sacrifice. No sicknesses. I heard someone say one time he never had a sniffle. He never had a cold. He never coughed. <laughs> it's interesting to think about that. He was perfect. He had no sin. So his body was unaffected. It, he was perfect. Uh, yet he could give up his spirit and die in six hours on the cross. Some people live days and days. And he, and, but he gave his life, gave up his spirit. Interesting. But God's glory. The sickness, listen to this in verse 4 fascinating. The sickness is not to end in death. This is a prophecy, a short-term prophecy, a few days. And, I, and God hit me with this. He, boy, did Jesus ever say that on a cross. This sickness is not to end in death. And I'm telling you, man, when the, in, in, in the pain of his suffering on the crucifixion and the beatings and the floggings and the things that you know, we think about the Passion Week, and it's hard to watch that. I watched it one time, and I, I have to make myself watch it now. It's just hard to imagine killing God uh, in, the, in the, the physical part of it, but not to mention the spiritual being separated um, um, on the cross and then the resurrection. And boy, did he ever say this thing. The true sickness is sin, folks. And when Jesus went to the cross, he, he fixed and he gave, a, he gave a remedy. He gave a medicine, you might say, for sin. Uh, and never more than, than on, the, uh, on the cross and, and the, the great miracle of the resurrection we talked about last week. Um, with Jesus, sin does not have to end in eternal death. Very interesting here, a par almost a, a parallel passage here to, to spiritual healing here. This sickness will not end in death. Uh, very, very interesting. Uh, remember King Hezekiah and... Uh, 
he was very sick and he was about to die and knew it. And he pleaded with, uh, he went to the prophet Isaiah uh, and Isaiah gave the word from the, from the Lord. Thus says the Lord. Uh, he said, I've heard your prayer. Listen to this. Listen to this story about Lazarus. He said, I've heard your prayer. I've, I've, I've heard it, Hezekiah, uh, and I'm going to heal you. And he gave him 15 more years, you know, very similar uh, situation. Now, he didn't die. That's in 2 Kings 20, by the way. Interesting read there to go read that. Um, but that was a, basically a prophecy. I'm going to give you 15 years, and that's going to be that's going to be today. Very similar here. But God's glory, twofold purpose. And then the test of the delay. We've already talked about that. Jairus, remember? My, my, my only daughter is, is sick. And, uh, you know, the, mess, the his family came and said, don't worry about it. He, she's already dead. But we, we understood that he still pleaded. You, you can heal her if you come. And then the woman with the hemorrhage, she stops. He heals her, teaches a little bit there. And we see Jairus was very patient. Jairus was patient for about an hour or so. He couldn't have been far from the house where the girl was. Uh, it didn't say days or uh, it was there in that same area community. Uh, but Lazarus is going to be days, folks. And that's the lesson that they come. Uh, we, we'll, there's more on that to come next week with Mary and Martha. Uh, and certainly the disciples. See this, I, mean, I see it as three parts. I see these disciples through verse 17. And what he teaches them about going back to, to Judea uh, uh, and, the, and the, the skepticism of the disciples there in the midst of a miracle. They had no idea. Didn't even know really what understood that Lazarus was dead. Uh, but these delays, uh, delays are, are hard. This probably is as hard as anything there is for us uh, to be patient. Uh, and we can't give up on God just because it's not according to our timetable and because we think that if it's not done by this time, then it's, then it's not going to accomplish anything. We, we have to understand we've got to leave it to God in these things. Uh, so the prophecy is not going to end in sickness, but that the glory of God will be displayed. We, already, we mentioned that also in that uh, already in this lesson that the uh, the man born blind, Jesus said, it's not, it wasn't because of anybody's sin, his or his parents or anybody else's. It's for the glory of God. And certainly that's exactly what Jesus says here. The glory, and it isn't. And when we look at us, we're studying it in three parts, one miracle. That's glory, folks. That's glory to God. So next week, Lord willing, we'll look at verses seven through around 17 or so, the midsection, the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the coming of the Lord when he starts to come. That today was the case. We looked at the family, the home, and Lazarus' situation, uh, and the prayer, all of these wonderful things. All This is life, folks. This is this is us every day, getting up and going to work, coming home, going to sleep. If you're retired now, uh, uh, like, like I've just been blessed to be able to do, uh, your life kind of changes some, but it's the same routine, is it not? But still, uh, this is the things here of home and love for God and and, uh, and keeping focus and praying to God and keeping Him at the forefront of all things. And what a wonderful lesson. So we'll, we'll look at those next middle section of the verses. I see it as being a three-part, maybe a four-part. Uh, and, and this is it. This is the end of the miracles. We started last November, and it looks like it's going to be a complete year study. Isn't that wonderful? 33 miracles, a whole year. Praise God. This is such a wonderful uh, book, this Bible. Nothing like it. So let's be in prayer. We'll, we'll close with a prayer for, for storm victims and those that have lost their lives and certainly salvation. Boy, that is number one. And make that the first thing. Pray for the spiritual things of God in your prayers and you will see an amazing result there and also in the physical things, our needs here on earth. God, we thank you this morning. We love you and we praise you for the miracle of the raising of Lazarus. We thank you that in six verses, sickness is mentioned. And Lord, we know that it is not getting any better. It seems as medical uh, help increases in knowledge, so does the sickness. You know, God, we we're thankful for it. Very thankful for medicines we take to help us feel better and, and live longer. But nothing overcomes death, God. Nothing overcomes death. And you, Lord, I think this is the crown jewel of the lesson. Uh, this sickness is not the end of death. We don't have to die and be separated from you because of you, Lord, because of these things. Uh, and the raising of Lazarus so close to your own resurrection, it's just so special. It's almost like we're speaking of it 
in this lesson. Thank you, God, for speaking. Uh, and I pray that we would be a praying people, and I pray that we'd be in your word reading and studying and, and allowing you to reveal the things of God. We pray for the lost. We pray that this, if we have power in some way to have this uh, recorded online, that somebody might come to know you through it. Uh, uh, and we don't put any time limits, God. Please help us to understand that. It is your timetable, and it's perfect. You've never made a mistake, and you never will. And these things we ask and say to the praise and the glory of Jesus. Amen.